Well, it's like, uh, here I go. Every time I start to talk, I start coughing. <coughs> Get it out of the way now. Um, democracy, the yellow vest movement, um, what's going wrong in our country? How do we fix it? Um, you know, the people speak to me every day because of my experience in the political arena. And there's just thousands and thousands of thousands of issues. And um, it's really hard to claw back to a handful of issues that we can um, aim for and target that uh, will empower everybody. And I think um, I've talked about this before, but you know, I think we need to start really explaining to people that don't know what is going wrong. Now, first of all, um, when, you, when it comes to politics, um, you're led to believe <coughs> that in this two-party system that somehow uh, you have control over politics and they get you to vote and you go along each year, each three years or four years and you cast a vote, that vote ends up with one of the major two parties and they continue on doing exactly to this country what they've been doing to this country for 30 years. And um, it's not good, it's not good for any of us, it's not good for our children, it's not good for our planet, it's not good for our future, it's not good for our nation. Um, and in fact, socially it's, it's dividing and uh, destroying everything that we once held dear in this country. And it starts with what's called two-party preferred count. You do not have a right to vote unless you include people that you do not like or may oppose. In other words, if you want to vote at the next federal election and exclude Labor and Liberal, you cannot, okay? That is where the problem starts, okay? It's much bigger than that. It's, it's much more ingrained than that. The, um, the problems you have is that the media will go on and on and on about two leaders chosen by their political parties. What they won't tell you is that those leaders could disappear tomorrow. And what they won't tell you is that who's dictating policy to those parties, and it's definitely not us. They're meant to represent us, and it's not happening. And so you've got a situation where you cannot vote them out. So nothing is going to change unless you empower your right to vote in such a way that you can get rid of the major parties or at least do enough damage to them that they might come around and start trying to offer us something we want in life. You've got lobby groups, you've got big corporations, those big corporations pay no tax here. Why do you think that is? They do deals, okay? Backhanded deals. Um, so right now, you cannot get rid of the problem. And until we can change electoral law to <clears throat> empower your vote and make it mean something, nothing is going to change. They're going to keep selling off anything of value in this country. Keep shipping off your mineral wealth. Keep attacking and undermining your rights. Keep destroying the environment and keep taxing and taxing and taxing you until you are working every day and your wife's working every day um, and your, your family's doing it tough and you'll keep working and working and working because they do not care about you. They care only about your money, what work you can do and what they can make out of you. And that's the corporate structure of this country and it's the electoral structure of this country. It has to stop. So unless we can get rid of forced two-party um, preferential voting and, and, and two-party two counting, which also counts the votes in their favour, then we can make no change in this country. So the first change has to be the empowerment of our vote <coughs> to kick these buggers out and hold them to account. We need a system that says that if I put my hand up to vote for you and I lie, I should be sat. They lie to us constantly. We all know it. It's not new. It's not like they suddenly started lying. Every single election for the last 30 years or longer, they have told you what they think you want to hear. And then when they're elected, they do whatever the hell they like. Okay, now that must be changed. The other thing is, whilst this is all happening, they're undermining other things that are very important. And that includes your rights, your liberties, your freedoms. Okay, if we are not free, then why, why would you want to live? Freedom is everything. And that freedom is, is, is in, usually defined in things like in Australia presently, your freedoms were defined by your, your constitution and your common law. Well, they're not defined well enough, they're not protected well enough, and your own government 
The own government is taking those rights away from you bit by bit by bit. If you want to build a fence, you've got to go to some authority, pay someone, pay someone else to do this. If you want to open a market uh, <clears throat> to help a farmer, if a farmer wants to sell tomatoes outside their property because they're doing it tough, they cannot do it anymore. There are regulations and rules and everything on us to define exactly what we do socially and uh, with our own property and our own bodies is unacceptable. And unless we can define a Bill of Rights in the Constitution um, and demand that that happens, um, we're in big trouble. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And I'm over it. I think most of you are. Um, justice. Justice is a part of that freedom. So if you're going to define politics and your right to vote, and then you're going to empower our rights and liberties, along with that, you need justice. And justice was social. We are justice. We are democracy. We are free. And you have to remember that. So if we're going to empower justice, it has to be by us, for us. In other words, uh, at the moment, um, you are presumed uh, guilty and the cost of uh, defending your innocence is higher than just saying, okay, bugger it, I'll do a deal. Courts, uh, the prosecutors, the courts and the lawyers will tell you to purge yourself. If you think you've done nothing wrong, they will say, just say you have and we'll do a deal. And that is asking you to purge yourself in the courts. When did you last hear of an innocent man getting a fair go Right, without having to spend everything he owns, sell his house, sell his car and everything to defend himself. That is not justice. <clears throat> we're meant to be presumed innocence and treated as if we're innocent until such time as somebody can prove otherwise. And that should be a jury of your peers. So justice, freedom and democracy are everything. Okay, And that is what we have to fix. And that rolls into a lot of things. I started to write note, notes. Um, it, it comes down to affordability. For instance, say, if we, the government operate for us in our best interests, they wouldn't be selling your power, they wouldn't be selling your water, they wouldn't be selling your farms, they wouldn't be selling your ports, they wouldn't be selling those essential services that used to be provided to us at the best price possible. So <clears throat> not only are you taxed out of existence while the big players pay no tax, but the affordability is going out the window. So you have to work longer and harder hours each year just to pay those basic necessities. We should own them. The government had no right to sell them. They didn't come to us and ask if they could sell them. In fact, not one um, not one political party has gone into election and say, we're going to sell everything you own, have they? Ever. Never. So even if they somehow think they have a mandate under their rigged democratic system, they never had a mandate to sell everything you own and they've done it, okay? We need to buy all of that back. And <clears throat> when it comes to your freedoms, it's your personal freedoms, it's your parenting rights, okay? Your personal freedoms are my right to do what the hell I like with my body as long as I'm not interfering with somebody else. It's my right to big up my child, okay? I do not want my child being taught that he that a five, four year old boy might want to become a five year old girl, that is not the state's job. It is not the education system's job. It's it's a parenting right. When a when a when a child becomes an adult, um, then they can make their own decisions. And we have no say in it because they will then be free and their 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 freedoms will be protected. So we need our parental rights. We need our freedoms, our personal freedoms to medicate or not to medicate, to use natural, to not use natural, um, to smoke or not to smoke, to drink or not to drink, to ride a motorbike or ride a car. But we, we, these are the freedoms, the basic freedoms that our forefathers fought for. They fought for democracy. They fought for freedom. They fought for justice. And we sat back and just watched that all get washed away. In <clears throat> When it comes to these minor issues, and I won't say minor, sorry, when it comes to the hundreds of issues being voiced online about what the Yellow Vest movement should be or what we should do as people to fix our problems, um, it's what we call here, it's a democracy. It's called the majority rule. Okay, So if we can replace all of the broken systems that have been undermined by self-interest and greed and corruption in Parliament and make it so the majority provides, then if a majority of people want to question um, immigration law, then they will get their way. If the majority of people want to slow immigration numbers until we catch up on water and infrastructure, then they will get their way. The, the idea of empowering you democratically and through your freedoms and, and through um, your liberties and um, through a Bill of Rights is empowers everybody, okay? So I, I may not have the same opinion as you on certain things, 
Um, other people have a difference of opinion. In fact, we all have. We're all subject matters of our education. So there's things out there that that you're, is, are important to you, but you can't do anything about it, okay? And it doesn't matter whether you're on the left of politics, the right of politics, or dead set in the centre. It doesn't matter unless you have the power of self-determination over yourself or the power of self-determination when it comes to um, your right to vote. So we, the LOS movement isn't about saying we're going to do this and this and this and having uh, strict and uh, uh, legislative policies written. We're not a political party. We're a movement of the people to empower the people so that you can make your own decisions in life. And <clears throat> if we could... <coughs> excuse me, if we could successfully, successfully restore democracy and, and enshrine and define our rights and um, improve our freedoms and our judicial system to make them fair, then everything else will come back on track. We, at the moment, when we talk about democracy, we have the United Nations over here telling us what we should do. We should close down power stations. We should do this. We should do that. Our education system should be this. They're um, pushing agendas in the local councils and everything else, and we didn't vote for them. So they don't have a say here. I don't know why they're having a say. I have no idea why our taxpayers' money is going to them or they're dictating we should send $10 billion to this country or that country or that country um, because we didn't vote for them. They have no say, okay? The only people the only, the only, people of importance in this country is it's, its people. We rule the country. We employ parliamentarians to do our will. They do what we tell them to do, and that's not happening. And when it doesn't happen, you end up in the position we are now. And so there's there's a lot of things to do, and I, I was going to write a list, but it's not really working for me. So I say this to you, you know, we have to start somewhere. Um, while you are being forced to vote for somebody you do not like or, or, or particularly oppose, maybe you hate them. I don't want to vote Labor and Liberal. I've been around a long time. I have battled the bastards for years. I do not want my vote to count for them. At the moment, my vote counts for no one unless it can't, includes being counted for them, and their counting system pushes it that way. We are not going to get anything back, whether it be our rights, our freedom, or our democratic practices, until we can get rid of the broken system they've created. And I've got to explain something to you here and you may not know. Um, the Constitution protects certain things, but there were certain sections of the Constitution that said, until Parliament otherwise provides. And so they are providing, they're providing for themselves. So they change electoral law, they have done that now for 20 years, and they change it each year to make sure that you have to vote for them. And not only that, not only have they rigged the system, but they play games of it. So there's been dressing up as other political parties, interception of postal ballot papers, tens of thousands, if not millions of names missing off the electoral roll. Uh, there's a list of things I could tell you about how dodgy it is. But the only people that can change electoral law to empower you are the very same people that benefit from it and their masters and their sponsors and the lobbyists that pay the money. We have to stand united in massive numbers, take that power off them. We have to take it back and give it back to ourselves and hand that down to our children, the same way we have to hand down rights and liberties. And there was a, um, been more than once that a famous, famous politicians over the years said that we're only one generation away from being slaves, and I think we are slaves now, and that's because as adults we saw things going wrong and we didn't act, and we were misled. We've been misled by lies, cheats and thieves. We've been told for years and years, if you don't like what's happening, vote for the other side. Well, it hasn't worked. It's not going to work. And this next federal election is just as much of a joke. It doesn't matter where you cast your vote under this current system, you'll end up with one of the two major parties heading in exactly the same direction, selling off your assets, your land, your wealth, your jobs, um, your kid children's future. And they will keep doing it and they don't care because their pockets are being lined by a broken system and they will walk away with uh, and, and, and go anywhere they like and, and they're set for life. And we aren't. They're set for life at our expense. We have to be the change. And while we're at it, while we're having this movement, let's do a few things ourselves to help each other. And that is to buy Australian, look after your mate, knock on the door and see if they're okay. Show your compassion. Australians are a compassionate, brilliant race of intelligent people. And I have no idea how so many of us have been led down this garden path and divided by sex and race and creed. 
Um, you know, when your country's messed up, when your country's messed up in terms of your rights, your liberties and your national identity, you can't expect people to come from other countries to live here and abide by any particular set of rules or, or be absorbed into the Australian culture when the culture's so messed up. You know, everything needs to change and it starts at the top. It starts with being able to get rid of these bastards out of Parliament that are doing the wrong thing, put good people into Parliament, get a system of citizens necessitated referendum so we can keep control of them, enshrining a decent Bill of Rights written by us for us to protect our children and we need to then move on to... Um, restoring justice itself and then all of the little things I won't say like I hate saying little all of the things that are, are, are um, destroying not just our nation state our sovereignty not just our planet and our environment but they're affecting society itself okay they're affecting society itself we we are seeing division at every single level name calling uh, all sorts of things if you think you're left, these things that we're pushing for under the yellow vest will help you. If you think you're right, these things will help you. What it won't do is empower a minority above a majority, and that's called democracy. If you think that a minority should rule and not a majority, then you're going to be offended with what I'm telling you right now, and you won't support it. So we need to man up, grow up, and take some responsibility for what we've allowed to happen to our fine country. And this, this, we need to set an example because this is happening in every country all over the world and people are being oppressed, they're losing um, their homes, their family units, everything is, being, um, everything is being undermined because we're allowing a broken system to exist. Australia should lead the way, adorn the yellow vest, lead the way, get out there, when the streets, when we're starting to have five and 10 and 15,000 people on the streets, they'll start to listen. I like to have in France, they'll offer us trinkets. We need to, to not stop at the trinkets. We want it all. We want our power, our rights, our freedoms and our justice restored to us. And we can hand that to our children and say, there we go, kids. That's the greatest thing I can give you, okay? Because the greatest thing you can give your kids is their freedom and their liberties. It's not a new car or a big house. I think you all know that, but thank you.